In the last lecture, you learn about how you can perform a view to view model binding. But what about view model to view binding? This means that if anything changes in the view model, how can we update the view? So let's go ahead and take a look at that approach. Now, the first thing we need to do is to make sure that we are creating a scenario that will allow us to perform this view model to view binding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same exact login feature that we are building. And I'm going to go ahead and create a button, which is going to simply have added a delay. And after the delay, we are going to set the view model to certain properties. So you can see that I'm adding a new button called fetch login info. It's not really going to fetch anything from anywhere. We're just going to fake it. And when we press the button, we will call the function called fetch login info. Let's go ahead and implement that. So I'm going to go over here and implement the function. And inside this function, I'm going to go ahead and change the username to something else. Now, since I'm changing the username, I would like the username text field to be updated automatically. But how can we do that? And just to make it a little bit more interesting, we can even go over here and create a dispatch. So we're not really changing instantly. We are faking some sort of a request, which obviously we are not, but we are faking or we are adding a little bit of more time to that change to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and put this inside over here and try to change the login view model username property. Make sure that we are using weak self because self in this case is a view controller and we don't really want to hold the reference to it. Okay. So now if I go ahead and run the application and press the fetch login info button, let's go ahead and first make sure that we are also adding the button. So fetch login info. What we want to happen is that when we press the fetch login info button, it should delay for two seconds because that's what we said and then it would change the view model username property and what we want to happen is when it changes the view model property the username property it would automatically bind it to the text field but if i go ahead and press fetch login info you can see that it might be getting the value and everything but it's not really updating anything over here and that is the view model to view binding that we have not implemented. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, in order to construct a view model to view binding, we need to attach something to the username as well as the password that whenever the username or the password changes, we get notification or we get notified using a closure. But right now, we don't really have anything that will fire such closure. So what we will have to create is we have to create an type eraser, which basically means that we are going to be putting our username, which is a string, behind our own type. So I'm going to go ahead and create a type called dynamic. And this is a generic type. And the reason it's generic type is right now you have a username, but you can have integer, you can have float, you can have boolean. So it should work on all of them. We will also go ahead and create our closure now. Now, there are multiple ways of creating the closure. I'm just going to make it nicer by creating a type alias. This closure is going to eventually give you the type, the actual type that you're doing, and it's not going to return anything. And now we can go ahead and create an instance of that particular type alias. And we can start with calling it optional. Now, we will call the bind function. So this is our function that we will allow the UI to register. And this is going to take in a type. This can be anything. And it's going to return void, which is pretty much the same as a listener anyways. We are going to go ahead and assign this callback to the listener. There we go. Now, in order to initialize or use this dynamic type that we just created, we are going to go ahead and also create a constructor or initializer. 
assign the value property to the value. Now, there is no such thing as value property, so that is something also we need to create. So we're going to create a value property. It is going to return the actual value. And whenever you are going to set that value, we are going to fire the listener and passing in the actual value. And that's the most important part. This means that whenever you are setting the value, so if username, you are setting the username to be Steven, then this set is going to get fired and the listener is going to give you that particular value that you just set so that you can assign it to the view. Now, currently, it's not really going to work because even though we have created the dynamic type, we are not using it. So we have to replace all of these places where we're using the string with the dynamic type. So I'm just going to remove all of that stuff and I'm going to be using a dynamic type. Dynamic, and we can start with an empty string. You don't have to use it every single place. You only want to use it in places where you actually are interested in getting the value and then binding the value to the UI. So in this case, I'm just doing it for both of them. Now, as soon as I build the application, you can see that I get multiple errors. So let's go ahead and see what's going on. The first thing is that now the username is no longer a string. The username, if you see over here, is a dynamic string. So we can't simply just assign a string to something called a dynamic type. So what we're going to do is we are going to assign it to the value property. That's the value property that we have implemented in our dynamic type. The same thing goes over here. There is no username property, which is string. We can go ahead and assign it to the value. That's perfectly fine. And it goes on for all the other cases also. Let's go ahead and build it. Okay, so this is all working, which is great. The final thing that we need to do is to actually register our username for the binding or for the view model for the binding. So let me go over here in the view did load and I can call login view model dot username, which is of dynamic string. And there is a function called bind. And this bind function is going to get called uh, or the closure is going to get called whenever you are setting the username property. So the problem now is we don't have access to the user name text field. You can see that the text field is defined inside the setup function. And the only place it is available is inside the setup function. So we need a way to access a username text field as well as a password text field if we want to bind something to it when the view model username changes. Now there are multiple ways of doing that again. What we can easily do is to simply create a lazy property somewhere on the top inside the view controller. There we go. You can see that it begins with a lazy, which means that it's only going to be initialized once. It's going to return you a text field. And this is basically all the code that we have for the text field. And in the end, we return the username text field. We can do the same exact thing for the password also. So let me go ahead and paste the password also. Now, we don't really need all of this stuff because we have already done that in the properties and they can, they should be able to access it since the property scope is global inside the view controller. So now that we have these properties, we should be able to access them. So I can say self dot username text field dot text equals to the actual text. Now, since we are using the self over here, I'm just going to go ahead and say weak self. There we go. So now what's going to happen is that when the view did load is going to get fired, we are going to call the bind function, which is going to set up this closure correctly. And every single time we are going to set the property, you can see that if every single time we're going to set it, it's going to fire the listener, which basically means that whatever the listener is assigned to, which is a callback that you passed, is going to get called. So you can see it's kind of like a, a callbacks going on depending on when you call it, when you set the actual value. Now let's go back to the view controller. And this line is very important because this line is the one that is actually changing the username property after two seconds to Mary Doe. 
And when this property is going to change, this is going to get fired. And when this did set is going to get fired, it's going to call the listener and then pass the value. The listener should already be set up because we have already set up in the viewed it load, which is right here. All right. So it's going to simply assign that particular married row to the username text field. So let me go ahead and run this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on fetch login info. And after two seconds, you can see Mary Doe is getting populated. So whenever the view model is changing, we are changing, we are updating the view. We can use the same exact approach for the password also, if you want it. So password, which is of dynamic string, dot bind. And now, since we are going to be using the password text field, we're going to get the text. And then we can say self dot password text field dot text equals to text. Now, password text field is secure field, so you may not be able to see the actual password that I'm typing in, uh, or we are not even setting the password. Uh, so you're not going to see anything over here unless I go ahead and change the password also. So login dot password dot value, and let's go ahead and just change it to password. So if I say fetch login info, you can see Marido and you can see the password. If I simply say login, then you can see that I'm able to call the login function when I press the login and it simply shows me the type. But if I want the actual value, then you will have to change that too to the value. So let me go ahead and run the application again. I'm going to go ahead and say fetch login info. It will automatically populate. And now if I say login, you can see that our binding from the view to view model is also working correctly and view model to view is also working correctly. Now, if I go ahead and change this Mary Doe to let's say Steven and say login, you can see the Steven is coming out. So our view to view model binding is working perfectly fine. So this is how you will perform a view to view model binding as well as view model to view binding in UI kit. There is no built in binding available in UI kit. So we had to write some code to achieve all of that stuff. Uh, but if there's a lot of binding that you're doing um, and you're starting a new fresh project, then I would suggest that you start your project in SIF UI and not UI kit. Um, SIF UI has built in bindings and there's a lot of other features that are available in SIF UI. Uh, depending on the criteria, I mean, if you are stuck with or if you have requirement that you have to use UI kit, then that's fine and you can use this binding. Uh, but SIF UI binding is obviously way more advanced than what we have implemented. So thank you so much. And I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you have, then please go ahead and rate and review the course. Uh, ratings are very, very important. And that allows me to create more courses and update existing courses like this whole section. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have courses ranging from Swift for Intermediate Advanced Developers to Combine, Swift UI Cookbook, Swift UI Declarative Interfaces, Testament Development, Mastering Rx Swift, Core Data, MVVM Design Pattern, and much, much more. So, Definitely go ahead and check out all the links that will be in the YouTube description. Check out the videos and please use the links to purchase these courses. That really helps in creating more content for YouTube and your support is always really appreciated. Thank you so much.